and now you can begin. Okay. All right. Thanks, Katie. Welcome, everybody. It looks like we got a big crowd today, which is nice. It's good to see everybody. Um, I need, uh, first of all, I want to go ahead and get the approval of the December minutes done. Um, if somebody could just raise their hand and I'll take a look. Can I get an approval? Okay, Nini, I've got an approval from Nini. And can I get a second from Mary Dale Bannister? So thank you. Um, uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about was, and if you remember last year, um, Colleen Riom did a um, knitting for food knit-a-thon. Um, and she gave me the information for that. Uh, the knit-a-thon this year is gonna be held on February 12th, 2022. And the knit-a-thon is a 12 hour, you knit or craft for 12 hours and get people to sponsor you. And they're raising money for Feeding America, World Central Kitchen, No Kid Hungry and Meals on Wheels. Um, the signups are now. So if you are interested in doing something like that and um, getting sponsors for yourself, um, if you Google knit for food 2022, all the information will pop up and it'll give you information how to sign up or if you want to donate, um, how to do that. And I'll go ahead and start a, a Ravelry. I'll put it on Ravelry and put a link on Ravelry and we'll do the same for um, Facebook. Uh, and I think we should have enough time to get it in the newsletter for February as well. So um, it's called Knit for Food, and this is the 2022 version. So uh, might be a fun thing to do. Oh, and they are going to have, you don't have to participate, but they are going to have a Zoom. So you'll get a link to the Zoom and you can sign into the Zoom meeting and, you know, knit with lots of different other people. So um, if you're interested, we'll, we'll have all that information out there for you. Uh, we are getting, um, and the board in general, getting a lot of questions about the February meeting, if we're going to meet in person. Um, it's a really hard question for us to answer. Uh, we are trying um, as much as we can to follow guidelines and to, to read about what's going on with this new Omicron variant. Um, we've always said from day one that uh, safety of the members is the priority here. Um, I do know that the people that meet in person want to meet in person, um, but for the people that aren't able to do this, they, they love the Zoom meeting. So it's kind of it's kind of a 50-50 thing and it's kind of hard, but um, we try to, by the end of the prior month, make a decision um, because we, first of all, we have to give Brentwood enough notice so that we get a refund on our money. Um, and secondly, we just want everybody else to have enough time to know that if we're going to meet in person or not. So um, it's hard to tell at this point. I think the Omicron variant has not peaked yet from what I read about in local news. Um, if, if you feel real strongly one way or the other, we're certainly interested to hear your thoughts on it. Um, at this point, though, I think, you know, as long as we can easily switch to Zoom and still have a meeting, um, we'll just just know that we've got your safety, it's our priority. And I know most of the people that attend the meetings are vaccinated and boosted and they, you know, they feel confident about that and comfortable with that. Um, but we would hate for anybody to get COVID on our watch, I guess. So um, we will make a decision. And, and again, we will let you know as soon as humanly possible, um, but it will be before February will be the end of this month. So, and again, you know, I'm open to comments. If you feel real strongly about something and you want to let me know or let any of the board members know, you know, you feel free to tell any of us and we'll discuss it at the, at the next meeting. So our next board meeting. So anyway, I, I'm sorry, I can't give you anything more definitive. Just, just know we're trying as hard as we can. So, <laughs> um, my last, uh, thing to discuss is the March elections. Um, at this point, um, we have had somebody step up for the communications vice president and for treasurer. We are still looking for a president, a vice president of education and vice president of community service. Um, so we're kind of coming down to the wire here. Um, I know a lot of the board members have been talking to people to see if they're interested. Uh, we've been reaching out to people to see if they're interested. Um, most of the people that we've reached out to have declined. Um, but we are kind of coming down to the wire here. We, we do need 
we do need people to step up and be on this board so that we can have a meeting in April. Because <laughs> if we don't um, have a full board in March, I, I'm not exactly sure how that's going to affect the April meeting. So um, we are going to continue to reach out. I do encourage you to think about it. Um, if you are considering a position, please reach out to the board member that currently holds that position um, or reach out to any board member to find out more about it. All the descriptions are in the handbook. Um, I will say that the people that are staying on the board are, are great people to work with. I think the Guild is in a great position right now. We're financially stable. Um, our membership is stable. In fact, I think you know we add a couple new members every month and uh, we just, we're gonna have to have We've got a huge turnover this year on the board and we're just gonna have to have some people step up. So um, please consider it. I hope you read my, um, my article in the newsletter. My husband has put his powers out there when he asks the universe for things, the universe answers him. So if, if it's been in your ear, if it's an earworm, that means the universe is speaking to you and that you have to call me because it's gonna happen. So. Um, anyway, seriously, we, we do need some people. Um, and if you're interested, uh, please reach out. So, um, I think that was all of mine. Um, next up are Eileen and Joni. I'm just going to give you an update on what they've been doing. Got them unmuted, Kate. I asked Joni to unmute. I don't think I will. I, I, I forgot to unmute myself. Um, <laughs> Eileen is unable to join us. Well, that's okay. You didn't miss much. You know, I talk all the time anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Eileen is unable to join us today. She is fighting some kind of virus. So you're stuck with me. Um, we still plan on having the uh, Founders Day luncheon in June. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that Omicron has peaked and is on the wane by then. Um, the other thing is that I have a list of four people, well, yeah, one, two, three, four, five people who I, as far as I know, have not contacted Eileen, and I know they haven't contacted me, who won prizes at the December meeting. So if you all would contact me or Eileen, we can make arrangements to get you your prize. There's Barbara Whitman, the Hollies, Katie, that's you and Sue, and um, Veronica and Colleen. So if you would contact one of us, we can make arrangements to get you your uh, December prize. And that's, that's about all I have. Great. Thanks, Joni. Uh, Joan, You're welcome. Joan, you want to unmute yourself? OK, let me find my notes here. Uh, we've had a successful. Um, year of, of charity items, I'll report those in my annual report in March, but the items that I um, received in December from people that dropped those off, we had 89 hats for kids, six baby hats, seven chemo hats, three baby blankets, one baby sweater, one cowl, one fingerless, no, there's more, no, eight fingerless mitts, 20 scarves, one poncho, one shrug, and one hand knitted bear. They were really cute. Um, the hats for kids, the total for that I will give you, we had 1,503 hats that were distributed to 26, 26 organizations. And those can be found in the January newsletter. In the half mile scarf challenge, we had 65 members participate and they made 542 scarves totaling 2,000 842 feet. So yay. Thanks everybody for, for stepping up to my half mile or quarter mile to half mile challenge. You, you guys did it. Um, and scarves are still really popular. And I've received some questions from other members. 
And I'm still gonna encourage members to make scarves this coming year. We're not gonna do a challenge, but we do have a need for scarves. And if you could continue to make those, that'd be great. Um, I did include a one row scarf pattern that Stephanie Pearl McPhee designed, and that's in the January newsletter. And it's a makes a nice warm, it's easy and it's a reversible pattern. So that might be something if you're bored with one of the other ones. I would follow the same guidelines to try to make it about 60 inches long. Doesn't have to be exactly 60, but you know, I think it was six inches wide. So that's kind of our our goal for those dimensions. Uh, let's see. And I I'm not going to establish any kind of challenges. I'm going to let the new community service person do that. Um, whoever that might be, I encourage anyone that might be interested in that to get in touch with me. It's um, really not that, you know, everybody's freaked out by the yarn, but, you know, we all work together. There's committees that take care of the projects. So, you know, it's really not, you know, not as bad as you might think. It's probably one of the easier jobs. So if you get in touch with me, I'd be happy to pass that information on and help you any way I can. Um, the only goals that I will set up, uh, Hats for Kids has is, is always been an ongoing um, charity that we, we do you know continuously. And I would like to at least have 1,200 hats. So I know we can do that. That's, and th as we get closer to the end of the year, um, I will request charities that you would like to have the hats donated to. Little Bit Foundation is one we support, um, but there's, you know, we try to provide 50 hats to every organization that the members select. So we, um, we could use more than that, but I'll be happy with 1200. And the only other one is the chemo hats. The June Founders Day Luncheon, that is our charity project. And I'm not gonna set a specific number, but I think if everybody on the, on the call here made two hats, every well even one hat every month you know that that would pretty much give us a good number of chemo hats so we do have some that i've i've saved from the end of last year so i think i currently have about mm, maybe 100 hats chemo hats maybe not quite that many but anyway we'll still collect those until june and then decide who those are distributed to so that is my report so. thanks joan katie Okay, so my report is pretty short. Um, you know, just want to thank everyone as always for engaging on social media. Um, I think that that's been very strong throughout this entire pandemic, even, you know, after we've met in person, people are still engaging quite a bit, which I think is great. Um, we are starting a knit along, a cowl knit along, the Scraptastic Cowl. Um, so there is a thread on Ravelry. I also posted on Facebook and encouraged people to reply to the post, share images of, you know, their scraps. The idea is that you're going to be using scraps, which I know, you know, if you're like me, you've saved scraps and have no idea what to do with them. So um, it's a really cute pattern as a way to get, get rid of some of those scraps that you just hang around too long. Um, uh, just keep around for too long. So uh, please check that out. Um, you know, uh, reply to the posts. You know, we have a really good community of people and it's just a fun way to, um, you know, work on a project together, learn some new skills and, and bust those scraps. So if you haven't checked those out, check those out. Um, and that's my report. Thanks. Uh, we'll save Kathy to the end so she can um, tell us about the, uh, education portion and we'll go to Samantha. She muted. Not anymore. Hi, there you are. Hey, uh, Hi. good afternoon. Uh, the treasurer's report was in the newsletter. Um, where do I hold up? Um, again, not too much activity and essentially we, uh, we pretty much broke even in December. Uh, we had some income on membership and then just a uh, couple expenses, again, Zoom, and then uh, some name badges. So we ended the month of December with $15,823.05 in the bank. Okay. 
questions? So, Katie, do you want to go ahead and unmute Kathy? And Kathy can um, tell us about the education portion. We're going to watch the education uh, video that Kathy has for us today. Um, so, you know, grab a drink, get a snack, watch the video, and then um, we'll come back together, do show and share, and um, you know, knit until till time is up. And if anybody has any questions or anything, we can address them then, or you can ask them in the chat. So, Kathy. Hi, everybody. Glad to see you all this cold day. Um, what we Mary and I did was put together a video um, early last month um, that uh, we went over and visited the bead places, which is one of the few live stores that's still in the St. Louis area. So we were anxious to go over there. And she's been in business for 15 years, which says an awful lot about her customers and her longevity. There's certainly loyalty there. But she's in the process of moving to her third location, which has still not happened because they're looking for, <laughs> with the shortages, they're, they're trying to find a new uh, furnace and they, they don't have one. But um, anyway, it's a very interesting and it's a bead place, but it's also a yarn place. So I found some lovely yarns that I that I bought, and uh, Mary Dale also bought some things. Um, hope you enjoy it. And um, I did take the opportunity to send her a link. So she uh, she replied back, thank you, and she'll be looking at that today after four. But do go over there if you get a chance. There's plenty to do in Fairview Heights. You can make a day of it, go shopping, go eating, go knitting, go yarning, whatever. And one of our favorite knitting owners works over there now the lady who used to own notorious is working there so um it's a part-time job but that's probably what she wants but uh, you know she lives in st louis city so i guess she just hops on that bridge and she's there in 15 minutes so good for her um the next program next month is we are going to move forward with a live presentation uh, that will be with Eileen showing us with a PowerPoint presentation, how to fix the, the hole in her mittens and I hope, or her gloves, I hope I'm saying that right. But that the plan is to do that on our PowerPoint using the projector. Now, if we cannot get together, I'd like to have a plan B and it may entail that I make a decision before the end of January because there's time that has to be edited Mary's going on vacation, possibly, to Disneyland. So I don't want us to be without a program in February if we can all help it. So my plan B is to call Eileen maybe this week when she's hopefully feeling better and see if we can work with some sort of a video in lieu of a live show. And then um, in March, we have Dee Dee who's going to be doing another great presentation. And that will be showing us how to use Knit Companion. And she's quite an expert on it. And I've said to her, keep it, pretend that, you know, you're teaching a bunch of people don't really know much about it. And so she's going to give us the basics of Knit Companion, show us how to use it. She's got an iPad, we'll be able to project her information on, on the screen with the projector we have. And that is the plan so far. So the only one that's up in the air right now is February. And we'll just have to keep an eye on what's going on with the COVID numbers. And uh, Mary, with your good graces, maybe we can get something together if we need to. And that's all I have right now. Okay, so Katie, if you wanna go ahead and get that queued up. Yes, I'm going to stop recording. which I have not done in quite a long time. So um, Katie, do you want to go through and um, do show and share? Yes. Um, let's see. I'm just going to go through, give me a, a thumbs up or unmute and let me know. Flora, do you have anything to show and share? I have your cow. Oh, oh yeah, I ran out of yarn, so it's very short. It's pretty. <laughs> it, makes a, it makes a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Mira's cow, Flora? Yes, yes. But I ran out of yarn. I thought I had enough, but it, it turned still out looks good. good. Yeah, yeah. What was the name of the shawl again, or the cow? The Mira 
M I R A Shaw. Okay. Cow, I mean. I'm going to try to do a bundle again on the on Ravelry. That's nice, Flora. Thank you. Uh, oh, go ahead, Flora. What were you going to say? No, that's it. <laughs> that's all. I finished my sweater, but I don't have the sweater now. You know, it was a Christmas present. I have a picture that I'm going to send you. Excellent. We'll put, we'll put it on um, Instagram. And we'll get it in the newsletter too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Mary, Dale, do you have anything? Mary Dale Bannister? Nothing. Linda, do you have anything? Linda Wicks? A very pink hat. This is very pink. Oh yeah, that's pretty. People go, people go, ooh, when they see it in person. <laughs> So I so I thought it deserved a pom pom because for sure no boy is going to wear this so might as well have a pom pom. That's all. That's nice, Teresa. Anything for show and share? No, nothing. Mom, do you have anything? Nothing. Margie, do you have anything for show and share? Oh, let's get you unmuted. It's the granite relief hat and it's in brown so it doesn't show up real well. Um, I found the brown yarn in the bottom of a bag so I just decided to use it because I always knit stuff that would more girlish. <laughs> so and I probably won't ever knit this hat again <laughs> that it's just a four row repeat and it's a very easy repeat but it just drives me crazy for some reason I don't know why but I'm thinking this is it for this hat pattern <laughs> It looks like a pretty pattern. What's the name of that pattern? It's I uh, was in the Guild newsletter, what, two months ago, maybe three. Yeah, it's two or three. Called um, Granite Relief Stitch. Okay. It was design, designed by Jane Rivers Benefield, a member of oh, the Guild. Oh, right. Okay, I think I copied that. Thanks. Harris, do you have anything for show and share? No, thumbs down. Joanne, do you have anything for show and share? Thumbs down. Susan, do you have anything for show and share? Thumbs down. Okay. Joan, do you have anything for show and share? No. no. Man, everyone knitted for well, the holidays. I, I, I can away. show you stuff. I have two hats, except for my, they're going to blend in with my green screen. So it's better not. <laughs> uh, Sarah, do you have anything for show and share? No. Samantha, do you have anything? Your video's off. You might not be there. Samantha, I'll come back to you if your video comes back on. No, uh, oh, no I, I don't. I couldn't get my video on. Sorry. Oh, okay. no, but no, thank you. No worries. Laura, do you have anything for show and share? No. Gail, I see you getting ready. I Do you have something hopefully for show and share? Uh, yeah, actually, actually I do. Um, <laughs> I, thank, I want to thank Kathy and company for doing that program a few months back on the, the circular knitting machines. Oh, so yeah. Me to hint for a um, Addy Express King size as a Christmas present, which my husband followed through with. And I've been having so much fun with it. Um, makes wonderful warm hats, the two layers. And I, and last couple of days I've been playing with cowls. I was delighted to find that... Um, the faux fur, like the Lion brand, go for faux, works fine on that. It doesn't get all tangled up. So that's the cowl, and then the hat's just some um, red heart ombre. But anyway, I've been having a blast with my new favorite toy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you are, Gail, because um, I, I am enjoying mine, too. I, I mean, it's not really, you know, you can whip up something really quick, but it's still fun to do. And you can also do flat panels. I have not done that, but if you I've do 
Yeah, you know, I've not tried that yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a little weary of that, one, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Gail. I'm I'm impressed with your proficiency and uh, and quickness. If you just got that at Christmas, I'm impressed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, Deborah, do you have anything for show and share? Um, yeah. Uh, is it easier for me to share my screen because the lighting's not so great in here? If I can, you, yeah. If you want to try, for sure. I'll give it a shot. Um, I've been into Mosaic a lot lately, so. This was a test pattern that I did called Mo, um, Amadeus. Can you see my screen? No, we can't. You can't? Let me, try, let me try making you the host really quick and that might work. And we'll just change it back when you're done. Okay. I just made you the host. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, there we go. It didn't give me that option before. There we so go. This, Ooh. Whoa. This, Amadeus. Um, oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. It was a lot of fun to knit. The lady that um, I do a lot of test knits for, she's really been on a roll this year with, with um, mosaic patterns. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool, a lot of fun. And it's one of those that doesn't look bad on the backside. I'm not sure if I have a picture <laughs> of the backside or not. Oh, that's not the back side. Nope, that's not either. Oh, well, I thought I took a picture. Oh, there it is. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's the back of it. Side. Wow. So she really designs well so that you don't have all these long strands. That looks <clears> so, like it could be the front side. I know, right? <laughs> yep, I mean, she does. I'm sorry. I said I'm impressed. Oh, thanks. Um, let me see. So the one that I'm doing right now, though, is is a mitered square blanket. I went from real complicated, and I'm trying to get to my other. I can't see my screen as a result of it. Oh well. The one that I'm doing now is just a mitered square for my grandson. So I'll see if I can stop sharing my screen. And it, it's a monster. I've been doing, see, you really can't see it that well. But anyway, it's, I'm doing it in three different sizes. So each of the squares are different. I go from a 96 stitch square to half of that, which is a 48 stitch square, and then half of that for a 24 inch square. So I'm making them all different sizes and it's turning out to be like six feet long by almost five feet long or five feet wide. So it's pretty darn big. I'm sorry you can't see it. It's just, and that's it for me. Thank you, Deborah. Mm -hmm. Can you do me a favor, Deborah? You should be able to click on my name and it'll say more and you can make me the host again. Can you do that while I call on other people? Um, more. I can't even see you anymore. Okay. Well, then I mean, you're, you're the big screen. Oops. That's what I mean. I think yeah. that was a problem. Okay. I don't know how. I don't know either. Oh shoot, I'm so what sorry. View, what view are you on? Are you on speaker view or gallery view? I'm on speaker view. I don't know how else to, let me just go to the participants maybe. Yeah, if you go to participants, I should be- There you, um, there you are. And then- Make host, there yeah. you are. Perfect, there we go. We're back in business. All right. Um. Let's see. Give me a second. Uh, Kimberly, do you have anything to show and share? Yes, then let's unmute you. Okay, so I have a Magic Mountain sweater 
that I've been knitting with knit collage. I don't know if you can, can you see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's my first sweater that will need to be steeped. So I steeped a sample of the same, of a sample swatch a couple nights ago. It was so cool. I couldn't even get over how awesome it was. It worked so well. So I'm a little nervous about doing this one, but that's really the only thing I have left to do is stick it and uh, sew in the ends. And that's it. What a that's fun a sweater. That's yeah. gorgeous too. Yeah, it's thick. And some of the little, some of the uh, yarn that came with it has like these little surprises, like little flowers and I don't know if you can, yeah. flowers and daisies in it. <laughs> Yeah, it's really cute. I really love the yarn. Well, send us a picture when you're done. I will. Final I will. product. I will. Okay. Uh, Lori, do you have anything to show and share? Um, yes. <laughs> I'm making my first sweater, <laughs> which is the flax pullover for my grandson. So starting out small. Um, almost done with the body and then have to start on the sleeves. It's adorable. That's all. <laughs> okay, Diane, do you have anything? I do. Um, you know, I've been doing gnomes and this is the latest, let's see, I don't know, trying to get it um, in front, but this is leave no gnome stone unturned and it's got a child gnome. Let's see if I can. I love it. I just trouble. joined her group. I just joined oh, her group. I can't wait to get started. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not showing it on the screen. Oh, here we go. If I look, no. Oh, here we go. But yeah, it's got a little um, child gnome to it that fits in this little basket in the back. And um, this was my first um, chance to try Estonian lace. And I was glad it was small because I fought every stitch of the way. So I'd never do a big project with it, but it was cute. But then I decided that the gnome needed a tree. And so now I made a, um, this is the Silver Bells Christmas tree. It's a free Ravelry pattern. And um, I may or may not put um, beads on it, but you know, for the gnomes, I don't think I will. I've got two other gnomes with that. So um, I think this is probably be my last gnome only because I don't need a house full of gnomes. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> Thanks, but Diane. they're fun to make. Mary Fisher, do you have anything for show and share? Yes. Okay. I started crocheting again and I started a. <sighs> I can't think of the name of it. It's uh, like a Heavenly Angels baby Afghan. I'm trying to get oh, it. Oh, yeah. There we go. We can see it now. Yeah. It's got, oh, butterfly. That's what it is. It's a butterfly um, baby Afghan. But there's a butterfly on each side. And I'm supposed to make uh, 12 of these. So I'm just plugging away at it. And I'm taking a rest from knitting. And I'm hoping that with um, some of the treatment I'm getting, I'll be able to start knitting again. So awesome. thank you. Well, it looks good, Mary. Joni, do you have anything? No. Jane, Bethage, anything? Yes. Here, Jane, I, it should give you an invitation to unmute. There we go. It's a mosaic hat. Um, uh, the mud hat, I think, um, by Deep Trout. So it was amazing. I've not tried mosaic before. It's it's like the thickest wool you can imagine. So <laughs> I, it's like magic the way it goes. So I liked it. It was fun. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Jane. It looks good. Thank you. You have a hat on the shelf behind you, and it makes it look like you have a little bitty hat on top of your head. <laughs> can you see that <laughs> yeah no katie, katie oh me katie. yeah katie oh i'm yes. in my dad's i'm in my dad's office and he's a collector of straw hats 
So, see, can you see it back there on the I video? See it. <laughs> so it's but on the small screen, it looks like it's sitting on top of your head. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, Marsha, do you have anything for show and share? Uh, I just finished this sweater I'm wearing, oh. uh, which was the Marled Mania pattern by Stephen West. Uh, and his was, he used a lot of different scrappy, and I just used uh, blue and black. And uh, the black was a uh, black, gray, tweedy. And uh, so, uh, that's that's what I've been doing. That turned out beautifully. Thank you. Tyann, do you have anything for show and share? Yes. I'm not don't have anything ready to show, but I'm working on the knitted, the big donut pillow by our yarn inspirations. So it's just a giant. Giant donut made with chart rose. Nice. And I just started, don't have enough to show, but I like that. That's it. Well, we look forward to updates on your progress. I hope I get it done. <laughs> Sandra, do you have anything to show? Uh, yes, it's Festival of Stitches, uh, a shawl. And I've had, it's uh, Madeline Tosh yarns. There's three different yarns. I've had it for close to a year and I, I just started on it yesterday. I've been anxious to start on it. So it's a, it's a fun knit. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, and um, oh. I, I wanted to I tell Kathy, I appreciated their work over there at the bead store. I knew she had some yarn, but I didn't realize she had that much. And I was really happy to see all her button selection. Buttons are so hard to find, nice buttons. So thank you, Kathy, and and who and whoever the other person was, I can't remember. Mary. Yeah, it was Mary. Yeah, Mary. yeah, I was right. I was afraid to say the wrong name. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Kathy, you just so happen to be up next. Do you have anything to show and share? Okay. Oh, Kathy. We can... Kathy, you're breaking up a little bit. You might want to pull back. I don't know. There's there's some breaking up. I'm out of battery. You're still breaking up, Kathy. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know. Oh, now we can hear you, but before you sounded like a robot. Something called the. You see, we can see it, but your description is still robot sounding. You might, if you want to email it to me, I could put it in the chat, Kathy. Okay. Katie, <laughs> Katie, it's yeah. Mary Fisher. Yeah, if somebody's using no. Bluetooth, Bluetooth earplug, you know, earphones, uh, that can that can break up like that if uh, the battery's getting low. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kathy, I didn't know if you heard that, but maybe a Bluetooth <laughs> issue, possibly. I don't know. We'll 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 circle back to that. <laughs> um, still looking. Who has not gone? Um, yeah, Lee, do you have anything to show and share? Mute. Okay, I have two. They're um, the same pattern. The chemo hat. Oh, I'm getting an echo. A chemo hat and a. This is cupcake. I think was the yarn. It's a mock cable. Uh, anyways, put it on. Oh. oh, that's it. Did you make those mitts too, Lee? I did, long time ago. Oh, okay. It helps in the cold house. Those yeah. are very nice too. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Donna, do you have anything to show and share? Uh, I'm just finishing up a hat as we're meeting. And um, 
It's just a simple little hat. I've been knitting hats this winter. I'm up to maybe 30 or so. Wow. Nice. Okay. And there are a few people who don't have their cameras on. Melba, Vicki, Kathy, if you want to turn on your cameras and show and share, let, let me know. Well, I, I won't turn my camera on, but I did finish um, a couple of cowls and hats, hopefully for our Antarctic trip. I did also finish a couple of um, light wraps that I'll post rather than show. And then I'm working on a sweater. Um, the pattern's called sumac. And, and like me, it has lots of textures in it. And I'm about a quarter of the way finished. And I'll put some progress photos on that. I'm knitting it with Cascade Echo Plus yarn that I've had for <laughs> no less than 18 years. So uh, I'll post those. Thanks. No problem. And I, I don't have anything. Hi, Melba. Hi. No worries, Melba. I, I don't have anything. Me neither. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I miss anyone or does anyone else have anything to show and share before we conclude this month's show and share? Speak now or forever hold your peace until February. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to stop recording.